I know you're ready now, amen? amen. Every one of you in this house, not some of you, not some Christians, was ordained by God before the foundation of the world to be a witness of the finished work of that cross and the empty tomb. Not some people are ordained by God. In Isaiah 43, 7, it says, You will be my witnesses. It's not an optional multiple chat, test question thing, A, B, or C. It says you will be. If you are a Christian, you are ordained by God to share the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ, and the hope that you have in Him. Amen? God's Word is manifested through preaching. It's manifested like I said, the Word of God, if we ever realize the power of our tongue and what comes off this tongue, boy, this whole world would be saved in 12 months flat, we'd be going home to be with Jesus. But the church doesn't know the power of this little thing right here and the authority that's behind it and what comes off your tongue when you speak. You're going to see what power really lives within you and comes out of you. Amen? Amen? Amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, go to Titus, the first chapter. It is so important that I've said this before, when you read the Word of God, you put your name in that book. When it says, I this, I that, whoever, whether it was Paul, Peter, whatever, your name belongs there. Because they're no better than you and they're not above you. They just went home sooner than you. They helped lay the foundation. They, God used them to help the church get started. Now in, verse, in Titus, first chapter, verses 1 through 3, it says, Paul, you put your name there. See yourself inside this book and in the Word. A bondservant, that's all of us, of God, an apostle, that means to be sent of Jesus Christ. According to the faith of God's elect, that's all of you. Not some of you. You are all God's elect. Amen? Amen. And the acknowledgement of the truth which accords with godliness in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began, but has in due time manifested His word through preaching, which was committed to me. That's all of us. According to the commandment of God, our Savior, the Word manifested. The Word, the Father, and the Spirit are one. The Word was in the beginning. The Word was with God. And the Word became flesh. They're all one and the same unit. It's the three workings of the Godhead, but it's one. When you speak the Word of God, you're going to see what really comes off your tongue and all the power that's behind it. You'll change the way you pray. You'll expect bigger answers to your prayers because you'll pray differently. You'll pray the way Jesus did. Father, I know you always hear me. And Jesus always answered. He always got an answer from the Father. Because they were one. They, they worked in agreement. Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen? That word manifested is to make clear, disclosed, made apparent, obvious, or evident. Evidence of. Now the manifestation of this book. Of the word that is spoken by the mouth of his bondservants. That's all of you. All apostles. You're all sent out into the world. Manifestation means the act of disclosing what is secret. This, this gets better today. This, I'm going to preach myself so happy today. Mm. Um, unseen or obscure. Discovery to the eye. Or to the understanding. The exhibition of anything by clear evidence or display. As the manifestation of God's power in creation. Or of His benevolence in redemption. See, the manifestation of God in our life has to be evident for this world to see. Man, the original church, everywhere they went, people chased them around like they chased Jesus. I mean, the shadows were healing people. Look at how quiet it got. When you go, there should be a manifestation of God's alive in you. Not you. See, I want people to feel Jesus in me. I want them to feel that. I want, I want people to see the manifestation of what God can do with a vessel. Because you are earthen vessels with all the fullness of God that overcame this world living in you. And it will manifest when you give it permission to manifest. 
see too many Christians today, and I think everybody's guilty of it. I don't think anybody's excluded. We get saved, we get filled with the Holy Ghost, we got all this joy and peace. We're feeling really good. But don't feel too good. Because if you're too happy with yourself, God's not alive. Because now it becomes about you doing great things and not the great one living his life through you. Like I said, I've never saved a soul. Although there's countless people that are saved. I mean, just in my first, from 91 to 97, there were thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of people got saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Demons came out. A couple hundred cases of Bibles given out every month. I mean, God used me powerfully, but I didn't do it. God's life in me touched all those people. They were drawn to a hope that I had in me. When people saw demons coming out, legs coming out, eyes being open, people with cancers and tumors being healed, they went, who are you? I got God in me. Amen. Jehovah Rapha, the healer, he does all that work. I had to explain that to pastors. Hey, stop taking credit for what God does. I don't take credit for anything other than Jesus saved me. But because of my salvation, I can yield myself. And watch the manifestation of the life of God live through me. And so can all of you. Amen? Amen. Stop looking for other ministers and evangelists and teachers to do what God's called you to do. This whole world needs to see the church on fire with Jesus. Amen. Who we need an awakening church? What is secret? Manifestation in 2 Corinthians 2, verse 10. For God has revealed them through His Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. See, living in the Spirit is when you're going to see the manifestation of it. See, because I say, God, what do you want to do with us? What are you going to do with us? He says, I want to live my life through you. Amen. Everybody wants to live their life through Jesus. We got it backwards. You know what happens when you start taking credit for what God does? He'll find somebody that doesn't. I'm just sharing with you. Your anointing, will, your anointing will be quenched. He won't honor something that you take credit for that only He gets the glory for. That's right. And Isaiah says, I have called you by name. I have made you for my glory only. Only. <clears throat> he alone is the glorified King. Amen. But you have a glorified King living inside of you, and that's what people need to meet when they meet you. Oh, Jesus. Then you'll see the manifestation of his life. Oh, this is going to be good today. I'm already getting happy. There's an anointing in this house. Amen. I was standing back there. You need to receive today. I keep getting receiving. You are healed. You are whole. The doctor's a liar. The devil's a liar. Jesus said of all accounts here. I keep getting that. I've been getting that since I walked in the door this morning. See yourself completely healed and whole. Sickness don't belong to you. It belongs on the devil's head, not yours. Amen. Jesus died so we don't have to be sick. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Romans 10. See, the church is really without excuse today. Too many people go to church instead of being the church. Ephesians, Colossians says it both. You are the church. He's the head. Even during communion today, it was like the Spirit almost slayed me right onto the floor twice I was up here. Because there's such a... What we celebrated today, we put in the covenant, the blood of the new covenant. There's so much power in that. Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Oh, man, you're going to see what the new, the new covenant really did for you today, even more so. Then, you know, when you study what He did for you, and that's something I never get away from, what He's done, I keep studying it, it 20-something years later, I'm studying it because I know in that that salvation package, the victory that it gave us over everything in life, we don't have to tolerate this world. We don't belong to it. We're above all this nonsense. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Romans 10, just 14 to 18. This is real important because this is to the church who you are. This is all of you right here. What we are called to. How then shall they call on Him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in Him whom they not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Every one of you is a preacher, a minister of the gospel of the good news of Jesus Christ. Every one of you is ordained for it, not some of you. 
And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach, is that word again, the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. We serve a good, good God. Amen. And we bring glad tidings of His goodness to people. His goodness to people. Stop telling people He's going to judge everybody. That's written. Okay, fine. That day's coming, but it's not coming for the church. Amen. See, your news to the world should never be of, of, of wrath and destruction. It's coming. Tell them it's real. But give them the good news of glad tidings. Jesus is Lord and He wants to save everybody. Amen? Amen. Oh, we got to talk of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? So then faith comes by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. Well, I say, they have they not heard? Yes, indeed. There's, watch now. Their sound has gone out into what? All the earth. Their words. Their words to the ends of the world. Now, 1 Peter 2. You are a royal priesthood. A priest proclaims the words of God. So stop looking at pastors and evangelists like they're something better than somebody else because we're not. We're just saved. So, so many people want to put people up on a pedestal. They can't be there. I can't be there. Nobody can. Am I born again? Am I filled with the power? Do I know who I am in Christ? Yeah. But like I said, there isn't a person on this earth that doesn't struggle with the battle between the flesh and the spirit because Paul talked about it in Romans 7. Read it. It's real. This stuff wants to rule you instead of the spirit of God. But that's what the refining fire is for, I found out. That whole seven times you get refined, oh no. I know none of you were stubborn like me. It took more than one fire to fix it. Well, not you, Kareem, but the rest of us. Well, we're the part of Yay, Kareem. <laughs> but do you see what I'm saying? When it says the Word, the Word has gone out. They've heard. Remember what it says? You're never going to be rejected when you share good news with people. Some people refuse to receive good news and a good report. There's nothing but a good report in here. This is the book of good reports. Amen. We have the victory in Jesus. Amen. He always leads us in triumph. We're going to prosper in all things, even under our health, even as our soul prospers. There's nothing but good news in here for those who believe in Christ. Right, amen. So you should be sharing glad tidings of the good news with everybody you run into. Some people, it even says, they will not hear. The devil has blinded them and made them deaf to truth. So guess what, though? Keep speaking it. Amen. Keep speaking it. In Mark 16, 14 to 20, verse 15, go into all the world and preach. The gospel to every creature. Go into. You are all apostles. You're all that just means to be sent. It's not a job title. It's part of your job description as a Christian. To preach the good tidings of God. See, you all have the same calling. Are there different anointings? Yes. But every Christian, I wish we would get this, has the same calling to share the good news of Jesus Christ. Amen. It is so important that you start. I, mean, I was thinking about this message yesterday when I was doing my ironing. I always go and I got about 30 ties in there. God even dresses me. It's pretty sad. I can't even pick my own clothes out. But he says, purple. I said, I thought that was for resurrection. He said, I said, purple for tomorrow. You are a royal priesthood. Yes, amen. All of you have priestly garments on. Purple. Purple. Royalty. We are royal children of the Most High God. We're not second class citizens. We rule on this earth as kings through Jesus Christ. We are royal children of the Most High God. Hallelujah. Amen. I feel like dancing. I don't feel like preaching. I, there's something going on in the Holy Ghost right now. I've been dancing since I got in this place. Oh, Jesus. Breakthroughs are coming. We're going to talk about that in a minute. And the reason is you don't have them because you're not speaking them. Because you don't know what's coming off your tongue. You're going to see that in a little bit. Now, that word preach is in the Bible a lot more than you realize once you start studying. In Romans, the first chapter, 
verse 8 to 17. I'm just going to read 15 and 16. It's so important when, when you see that you're a priest, a prophet, and a king for God's glory. You will start speaking that way. You will start living here on earth as it is in heaven. Your heavenly life starts now. The day you got saved, heaven was a guarantee. Why are you waiting to get to heaven to experience it? I didn't get one amen, Gail. Did you see that? Not one. Not one. Why are you waiting for heaven to experience the blessings of heaven now? What came down? The kingdom of God. Heaven. Where does it live? Inside of us. Amen. Why are we not having the heavenly life now? See, because up until Christ, they lived under the curses. And there was no way out. So the Father sent our way out. He sent Jesus Amen. to walk holy, perfect, blameless, sinless, fulfilled all the requirements of the law. He not only, when he went to the cross, took the curses of the law, he took the power of law, which is the power of sin to keep you, and nailed that to his body. So no longer does the power of sin have dominion in your life, but the power of Christ, the Holy One that lives within you. Like I said, like Hagin says, he says, i got the greater one living in me. Nothing's going to happen to me until it's my time to go. And he lived that way. He said, I don't have to be sick. He was doing some teaching. He said, yeah, I had a headache 42 years ago. I just chose to agree with what Jesus did for me. He said, I don't have to have anything of the curse of the law. Amen. I mean, he made it so simple. It was so obvious, but he had that country way of saying things. He goes, I just chose the greater ones in me, and he was never sick. He took all the sicknesses for me. He said, I don't have to have any of those because they, they belong under the law, and I'm under the blessing. He made it so simple. I went, like, we really do a lot to destroy the simplicity of your gospel, don't we? Yeah, we do. We want all these theological debates about Jesus. He died. He rose again. He defeated the devil. We have victory in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. 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 15 and 16, Romans 1. So as much as in me, I am ready, are you, to preach the gospel... To you who are in Rome also, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation. For everyone who believes, for the Jew first, and also for the Greek. When you go back and read that chapter, it starts off, Paul says, I'm called to be an apostle. And Paul states he was separated to the gospel. You notice that word separated. Every one of you before God created this universe separated you out. He separated you to be a messenger of the gospel of the good news, glad tidings of Jesus Christ. You were separated out before there was a universe here. He made everything out of nothing. God already has separated you out for His... He even says in John, the first chapter, we were born, you were born again, not by the will of man, but by the will of God. Remember, not a person in this house was born by your parents' will. You realize that? You think you did. You think you planned your kids out, but you didn't. Because it says in John, the first chapter, you were born by the will of God for His purposes and for His glory. What a privilege that He chose us. There's days I've questioned, why did you save me for a time such as this? This world's a mess. He says, because I know you'll stand up against it. Because I'll never be ashamed of the gospel that saved me. See, when we're not ashamed of Him, and everything we want to do in our life glorifies Him, Man, when you get there, and the things he's been teaching me lately, <clears throat> I think that's why I cry so much lately. I just see how fallen man is and how weak we are, and how much hope we have in man to be strong instead of God's strength. God carries me through everything, not this world, not, not food, not anything. God is my strength, and he's my only hope. And man, once you get there, you really start to trust him, and you trust him. I was even talking to Kim last week on the phone. We were talking about trust. I said, trust doesn't happen the morning you got saved. I wish it did. I wish all of us, when we got born again, we were there. Wouldn't that have been nice? All those wrestling matches you have, well, Green never had any but the rest of us. No pressure on you, though. None. No, but do you see what I'm saying? Why do you think Paul, who wrote more than half the New Testament, boasted in his weaknesses? Because God showed him. 
He had no good but God. He showed him his human strength and intelligence was dumb. In the original King James, it says, all of my knowledge is, is dumb. I'm just leaving, that's, that's your name. That takes your intelligence out of the equation. And he was the smartest man of his day. He knew all of what, five, six languages? He was more advanced than all his teachers. And when you were that young, to say you were more advanced than the teachers, no wonder why they wanted to kill him. Because you weren't considered knowledgeable until you had gray hair back then and you were older and you'd been around and you'd sat around thinking you were something. And a bag of chips like my wife would say. Yeah, amen. <laughs> now the power of your tongue. What comes out of you when you speak? Now, in Revelation 22, 1, it talks about the river of life. Okay, now, I've been there. I've stood on the banks of that river. The river is God. Because when I stood on the banks with Jesus and I looked in, and it is like a crystal, it's like a mirror. You can see yourself in it. People are diving in it, swimming in it. And then he says, look to your left. And then he disappeared. So I looked down the river where everybody's diving in, and at the end of the river, the river came up, and there was Jesus. And everybody swam right up into him. We have the river that flows down the middle of heaven that will never run dry. Never. Living inside of you. Because the Word, the Father, and the Spirit are the living water. We can prove that in the Bible. Amen. We'll get to that in a bit here. Revelation 14, verse 2. You don't need to go there. Go back and read 1 to 5. John says, I heard a voice from heaven. The voice of many waters, like the voice of loud thunder. And I heard the sound of harpers playing harps. The Spirit, the water, and the Word are one. When you speak the Word of God, you have the river of life coming out of your mouth. And all its power, all its deliverance, and all its authority, and all its dominion. You literally have the river of life living in you. That's how powerful a source of water that you have in you. You know, we talk about the Holy Ghost. We pray in tongues. You feel the Spirit running through you. You feel all good about life. But no, no, no. It's so much more. It's a river that can't ever be stopped. It can't ever be run dry. And it's like thunder when it roars. Your voice, when you speak, you should see the river of life coming out of you, touching people. Ooh. You should see what's behind your tongue. If you ever realize what's inside of you today, what's in here, the river of life, and the power of God Himself that thunders when He walks amongst His people in Psalm 68, the heavens will thunder, the earth will shake, and they'll drop forth rain. The heavens thunder. We were there the other night, and I was sitting there yicking and yakking about God, and we were talking about it, and I was kind of mm -hmm, grumbling a little bit. And I said, yeah, what I need an answer or something. We were saying something. We're sitting there in the living room. And man, it thundered right over the house. Oh, boom. Oh, sorry. What was that for? I heard you. He hears us. He hears us. I don't know if that thunder was just for me, but it shook me up pretty good. Whatever my conversation was, it changed to, I'm sorry. <laughs> My grumbling went away instantly. <laughs> it was gone. It was praise you, Jesus. <laughs> but I'm talking about a river of life that has so much power. When Jesus spoke, He's the Spirit. He's the living water. There was light. There were the, the continents came up out of the water because the earth was covered with water. When He spoke, the earth was... The, the, the continents actually came out of the, under the water and came up and separated the oceans, it says. See, the Spirit and the water are one and the same, and the power behind the Spirit. When you speak the Word of God, when you preach, we just talked about preaching, all of you are preachers, the water's coming out of you. I'm going to prove that scripture here, but there's one little thing I want to share in 2 Samuel, the fifth chapter. God showed me this when I was a young Christian about what comes out of us. See, when God, see, David at the time had just become king of all Israel. In 2 Samuel 5. <clears throat> and I like it. Here he comes, king over all Israel. Here come the Philistines. So next time you want a promotion from God, get ready. 
The Philistines are coming. <laughs> Keep your guard up. Because when I was studying that, it's amazing. Okay, he's the king of all of Israel. Here come the armies of the Philistines. We're going to go take this guy down. So the next time you want to go do something with God, and he says, okay, go do this, be ready. Keep that spiritual armor up. Be ready for anything. Because when you step out in boldness for God, I want to be used. I want your life manifested in me. The Philistines are coming for you. Just Sharon. Just Sharon. But they have to bow at the name of Jesus. See, we don't need spears. I don't need nuclear bombs. I don't need anything. Because I got the Word of God. All i got to do is speak it and God will back it up. Because He is the Word. He is the Spirit. He is the river of life. And when they were coming against Him, see, I like uh, David's whole philosophy on doing war battles was great. So now the Philistines are coming. So in verses 19 and 20 in 2 Samuel 5, So David inquired of the Lord. See, don't go getting out there until you inquire of God, please. That's where we get in trouble. Oh, I'm going to go save the world. I tried that. It didn't work well. I found out here and took care of that part. Yeah, I, I was a young Christian. I'm going to go save the world now. I got this. I got it all figured out. Yeah, I got it figured out, okay. I got it figured out. I was going to keep learning the rest of my life, and I didn't know much yet. Mm. And it says, Shall I go up against the Philistines? Will you deliver them into my hand? Always seek God first before you go jumping into a pool of sharks. Amen? Amen. <laughs> and the Lord said to David, For I will doubtless... See, like, you question me? See, with God, there's no maybes, coulda, woulda, shouldas. There is, I am God and I will. It ends there. Doubtless delivered the Philistines into your hands. So David went to Baal Perazim... And David defeated them there, and he said, The Lord has broken through my enemies before me like a breakthrough of water. Therefore he called the name of the place Paul Perazim. And if you read that in that second Samuel, it's so powerful because God told him how to do it. How to go one way around the back and everything else. And he says, when you go to do it, I'm going to go before you and destroy them. Your enemies are already defeated. Wait for strategy. Inquire of the Lord. Okay, what's up? The Philistines are coming. He'll spiritually show you to defeat them before they even get near you. Because God sees from beginning to end what's coming. Yeah, I can see the top of the mountains out there. Now, I can't see on the other side, but I know God's standing right there. Yep. And if i got enemies coming over that mountaintop, He'll show me how to pray. They'll never see Perump. Yep. Amen. They'll never get anywhere near you if you inquire of the Lord. See, I've learned that lesson. He's the Lord of breakthroughs. Paul Parazine, he'll come in like a mighty rushing river. David's had a breakthrough like mighty water. It's so important that when you speak the word of God, you see the water and the power behind that river of life coming off your tongue. We are to give life to people, not death. Amen. We're to speak life, not death. We're to speak glad tidings. Don't ever water down the, the Bible. Don't ever say, well, you know it'll be okay. No, it won't if you die without Jesus. Amen. Always tell the truth. Amen. Never compromise your weakness by telling people, well, you can just go do what you want. No, you can, but in the end there'll be a penalty. Okay. See, don't, don't cover it over. Tell the truth, but bring glad tidings. Tell people there's hope in Jesus, but He's the only hope. Amen? Amen. Amen. Like I said, the Bible makes it clear. He says there, in Isaiah, there is no Savior but me. It ends there. There's no other doctrines. There's no other denominations. There's no other religions. And you notice Christianity is the only one that serves the living God. Amen. We're the only one that doesn't have to kill anybody. That's right. Yeah. Amen. We had somebody killed for us. We serve a living God. Amen. We serve a living God. Amen. And He's come to put His life in you. Mm. John, the fourth chapter. This story has touched me since I was a baby Christian. When I say Jesus is your role model, the woman at the well, he says, yeah, you don't have five husbands. You had five. The one you with is not your husband. This woman was going through some men. Now, guess what? Guess what? Never judged her. 
never corrected her, never rebuked her, offered her eternal life. Amen. Never looked down on a person. You don't know how they got there. This, this story when I was a baby Christian touched me so much because I saw a holy God break every taboo in the Bible under the law because men back there were never alone with women, especially out in the wilderness like that by a well. And she was a Samaritan. I mean, she was a mixed breed. The Jews hated them. And here Jesus is the Savior of mankind sitting there with this woman. You had Well, you talk to him about Jesus. Come here. Somebody put their hand right on the side of Marcia's head right there. It's right there. I can see it. Father, I see that. I see that aneurysm, that, that, that damage, that lie of the devil. I command it dissolved right now. I speak to you, and I command you dissolved it out of Marge's body right now. She's the temple of God. You have no right here. We live under the blessing, and you're under the curse. When you go back where you belong, and that's in hell. Jesus took all curses in the tomb and left them buried, so they can't touch us. You shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. God's work for you is really just beginning. Don't listen to that lie ever again. You're going to be satisfied with a long life. In Jesus' name, you are healed. You are healed. That's dissolving right now in Jesus' name. Your head's going to get hot. It's going to burn because he's dissolving any infection, any infirmity, any blockage. It's healed now. I curse you right now, aneurysm. You are a lie of the devil and you are dissolved. And the power and the authority of Jesus' name, Marge is healed and whole. And she, that spirit of fear, you're done. You got destroyed at the cross. You stand in the power of His love for you, Marge, and watch the blessings of the Lord overtake you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You tell him about Jesus. <laughs> He's going to talk to you, you talk to Him. Because what doctors can't fix, Jesus already has fixed. Amen. Everybody else already healed? Praise God. Amen, amen, amen. 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 God is good. Birthday cake's over there. <laughs> Happy birthday, Jesus. Glory to God. I don't wait to Christmas to celebrate his birth. I celebrate it every day. I, I can't believe everybody waits till one day out of the year to celebrate the birth of our Savior. Celebrate him every day. Amen. 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 God is good. Amen. All the time. Oh, sure, young lady. Against the portion. 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 But of love, of mercy, and compassion. And we run around as a church looking to call fire down on everybody's head. <laughs> call fire down on the devil's head and not on people, and then he can go save them. Amen? Because we're not qualified for that. That's not part of our job description. That's right. It tells me to go preach glad tidings to people, and mercy to people, and salvation to people, and healing to people, and kindness to people. That's what it tells me to share, because that's all Jesus is, and a whole lot more. Verses 13 and 14. Look at what Jesus offers this woman, never judging her. Jesus answered and said to her, Whoever drinks of this water will thirst again. But whoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst. But the water that I shall give him will become in him a fountain of water springing up into everlasting life. In John 7, 38, Jesus says, He who believes in me, as the Scripture has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of living water. The Spirit of God, the Spirit is God, and the Spirit is the river of the life of God. Amen. The Spirit of God is the river of His life. That's what you're filled with. Not a You're filled with it. You're filled with it. Amen. The river of life is in you. Amen. 
You ought to give the river of life to people. When you speak, it should affect them so much they're going to do one or two things. They're going to run in fear or they're going to humble themselves at the feet of Jesus and say, Save me, Lord. You have the river of life. The Spirit of God, which is the river, is the life of God being poured into us to be poured out into this world. When you speak, they should feel the river of God flowing over them. They should feel it. It should change them on the spot. The morning I got saved, oh my God, I thought I was going straight to hell. I didn't know what the living water was. All of a sudden, the inside of my body was bubbling over like a tea kettle. Boop, boop, the alarms were going off. I said, I'm dying. Part of you is. <laughs> Those demons are leaving. Because he poured the river of life into me. You know, I never had to pray to get any of those demons out. As he poured himself into me that morning, they just started shooting out my head. Oh, thank you. Praise God. Jesus. You danced. That's why David danced before the Lord. Guess what? I didn't have to do it. The river of life that flows from God himself, who is the river, his life flowed into me through me and pushed them out. Because there wasn't room for God and anybody else in there. Right. Oh, we're saying something now. Amen. See, because if there's no darkness in Him, there's no darkness allowed in me. Because the greater one is in me. And He has poured His life into me. That's what He had me type, type yesterday. The Spirit is God, and the Spirit is the river, is the life of God in you. Stop looking to the world for healing, for deliverance, for provision, for comfort, for joy, protection, wisdom, knowledge. It's in the Spirit that's in you. Amen. It says in Colossians, all knowledge and wisdom is found with God in Christ, and Christ is in you. You're the smartest person on the planet. Do you know that? You are. Like me, i got no education. i got no degrees. I don't have any of that. But I got the guy who made the universe sitting in me. Amen. I got his mind. So what I need to know, he'll teach me. He'll equip me for every good work that he's going to do through me. I'm not going to do any of it. I'm just going to yield to it. Because the river of God that's in me is going to come off my tongue and it's going to water this world everywhere we go. We plant, we what? It says in Corinthians, we water. We water. You know what that is? It's praying the word over people. And the water of God will come down and rain on them. Which says in Romans, yeah. we stand in grace. That fountain of a, of a storm coming. I was watching that planet Earth while I was ironing yesterday. And they were showing these storms, what they do at the bottom of the ocean. How they beat it all up and how the fish even hide. The lobsters go into these, these gullies in the bottom. Because when the storms come, they beat them up. So these little trains of lobsters go and they go into it. They hide. So the storm doesn't beat them up. But when I watch those waves crashing... I flash back to my childhood, which a lot of it is gone from the head injury, but some of it's there. But I flash back to going to the beach when the storms came in. And those waves were just huge. And we'd go in the water and we'd body surf. But if you didn't hit the wave right, you were pushed down into the bottom. And you came out, boy, we came out bleeding, scraped, cut, because all the broken shells are down there. And man, if you didn't ride that wave just right, it pushed you straight down, and you came out all beat up. And he says, now when you see those waves, when you see those waves, that's what's coming off your tongue, the power. When you see a hurricane, the river of life that comes out of you is just as powerful. That's how much the water comes out of you. The living waters that is in each and every one of us. The life of God, nothing can contain Him. This universe can't hold Him. He holds the universe together. It sits as full as His mic is right here. That's how little the universe is to God. It sits right in the middle of His chest. So we don't know how powerful He is, but that's the power that's in you. That power of those waves, I saw it yesterday coming out of my mouth. I went, holy cow! He says, that's what's in you. Now start speaking my word, and the water will go do everything. It's not by might, we just sang it, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Amen. The spirit is the river of life that comes out of you. Oh, man. I'm seeing all this right now. Oh, Jesus. Father, open up everybody's eyes and ears to the Holy Ghost to give revelation knowledge of this word today in Jesus' name. So we see who we are. And we see what's really alive in us, oh God. Yes. Oh, hallelujah. Acts 10. It's another one of my favorite stories that proves what I just said about the river coming out of your mouth. This proves it. God, when He gives you revelation, He'll always back it up with His Word. 
He always backs himself up with his word so we don't have to question and try and figure it out for ourselves because uh, we're just not that right. I'm sorry. Because in your natural mind, you will never figure out God. Carnally minded man can neither know God nor the things of God. 2 Corinthians. Uh, 1 Corinthians second chapter. Excuse me. You go back and read that. Never try and figure out God with your own human intellect. You will wind up one confused puppy. And confusion doesn't come from God, but He gave you love, power, and a sound mind. He gave you His mind to replace yours, okay? So stop relying on self and rely on Jesus. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's a day of healing for some of you. <clears throat> Spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically. Receive it. Receive it. Amen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes. I'm again that since I walked in that door. The Spirit of God is moving in this house. Receive all that He is inside of you today. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. He wants to manifest Himself inside of you right now. Lay your life aside and let God rise up in you and just receive all that He loves you and the power to heal you and make you whole. Acts 10, 34 to 48. We're just going to read 34 and 36 and 44. Everybody knows this story about going to Cornelius' house. Yeah. Cornelius was praying. They visited him. Peter was up on the roof praying. He had a trance. Listen, these people are going to come. You go to his house. He didn't want to go because they were Gentiles. <clears throat> That's a rebuke to the church. God wants you to witness to people you don't think should be witnessed to. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. He said that's a re this whole story is a rebuke to the church today. Yeah. Because we look at people through human eyes instead of the one that made them in His image and loves them Amen. and died for them. Yes. You realize I don't care. It's not how evil people are. Jesus died for everybody on this planet. There's not a soul on this planet that's not made in His image and His likeness. His love for them is immeasurable as much as it is for the saved. He didn't come for the saved, which are the sick, He says, but I came for those that need a doctor. Hello? That's right. <clears throat> so never judge by appearance, the Bible says. 34 and 36, Then Peter opened his mouth and said, In truth I perceive that God shows no partiality. But in every nation, whoever fears, whoever... Whoever, every nation, fears Him and works righteousness is accepted by Him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, here we go again, preaching. Is that word preaching again? Peace through Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. See, whoever. So the next time somebody's in your path that you don't particularly care for, maybe you just need to share the love of Jesus. An enemy may become a friend. May become a brother and sister in Christ. Amen. See, we, we're not here to separate who's who. That's his job. Yeah. <clears throat> Our job is to be available to let the life of Christ manifest. And when I read the Gospels, the only people I saw him correcting and rebuking were the religious leaders. He called them hypocrites, adulterers, murderers, liars, thieves, and a few other things. We're not entitled to that. We call them unsaved people. They're not saved yet. 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 Hey, you know the thing I was listening to a ways back and he talked about if the church actually knew who it was and the power it has and the power of the word and the authority and dominion we have, this whole world will be saved in no time and Jesus will be coming back for his church. Yeah. It's true. Verses 44 to 46. <clears throat> While, this, is so, this is the water coming out of your mouth. Amen. The living word. While Peter was still speaking these words, preaching, the Holy Spirit fell upon all those who heard the word. Yes. There wasn't saved yet. And those of the circumcision who believed were astonished, and as many as came with Peter, because the gift of the Holy Spirit had been poured out on the Gentiles also. I checked this morning. We be Gentiles, no? Yeah. Uh-huh. We've been grafted in. Amen. amen. Makes us join heirs. Amen. Amen. For they heard them speak with other tongues and magnify God. 
boy Cornelius, his whole household, his servants, got saved. Yes. At the preaching of the word, yes. the Holy Ghost fell on them and filled them with the living water. Yes. That's the living water of life that comes out of you. See, the preaching of the word, the spirit, the river comes out of you. And it waters people. And it waters people. And it waters people. When I pray over people and anoint them, the Holy Spirit comes right out of my hand. I can feel it. That's why the women, when you come up, you pull your hair back because I'm going to give you a flat iron. <laughs> they charge you for that in the beauty shop, not here. <clears throat> but the Holy Ghost, it's free because the gift of the Holy Spirit's free. Amen. It's free. It was given to us. But we don't let it live. We put such restrictions on God. In the circumstances, you go, oh man. Holy Ghost fell on them. They're Gentiles. Amen. Are we looking at people just because they're not saved the wrong way? Amen. See, this is a correction today, too. It's an excitement because you know what's coming out of your mouth now. The river of living waters. The river of life. The Spirit of God. The life of Christ is the Spirit of God in you, living through you. Amen? Amen. And like I said, I want you to get revelation knowledge of this today because... The days we're in, we don't have a lot of time. Amen. God can't, and that, you know, you turn on the TV and a lot of other ministers, they're saying the same things. Hey, folks, get busy about your father's business. Because it's harvest season. I don't know how long the season's going to be. Nobody does but God himself. But there's an urgency in here for us to share the glad tidings of salvation in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I've had an urgency for my whole, since I've been saved. But never like this past year, it's gotten more and more intense. Yes. Come closer to me. Let me burn up anything that's left of you so that my life is manifested in you and through you. See, when we leave here today, whenever we leave these doors, when you go out here, know something, that river of life that flows from God Himself, who is God, is in you, and it wants to water this whole valley. How are we going to have an oasis here if we're not watering it? Amen. Hmm. Man, I feel good. Amen. God's just good. Amen. Second Corinthians 4, it's one of my favorite chapters. It talks about that. The manifested, that word manifested again, manifestation. Evidence of your walk with Jesus. See, everyone in here, you should want to have evidence. evidence. People should go, I know them. They walk with Jesus. Peter and John, before the St. Edmund, what happened? They said, although being uneducated men in the book of Acts, we know they've spent time with Jesus. See, they weren't taught under the teachers. They were taught by the Holy Ghost. That was in the beginning of their walk when they got thrown in jail. They said, and they told them not to preach in the name of Jesus. They said, well, we can't do that either. We can't help but preach what we know to be true. See, you know the truth. So for you to hold back the truth from people... How's God going to manifest in water this valley? How are we going to get this whole city saved unless, like in Romans, you've been sent so the world can hear the word of God in truth? Amen? Every one of you has the same anointing. Yes. Verses 10 and 11. Look what Paul says. Always carrying about in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus, that the life of Christ may also be manifested. There's that word manifested again. In our mortal body. For we who live are always delivered to death for Jesus' sake, that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. Is that word manifested again? Now Melissa's got this down to a sign, so she don't have a problem with it. That whole denying thyself. What did Jesus say? Anyone who wishes to come and follow me, to be my disciple, must deny himself, pick up his cross, and follow me. Remember something? Don't look at the cross next to you. That's not yours to carry. Your, your cross is your cross, not his. His cross is his cross, not his. And so on and so on. Stop looking at other people's crosses they're carrying. You carry yours. Then you'll fulfill your destiny while you're here on earth. Amen? Amen. It's that important that you stop looking at others and start looking at Jesus. He's your reflection. We're to be a reflection of his life down here. 
We're going to allow Him to manifest His life through us. Because when we lead a life of denial, we have become Christ-centered. And when we are Christ-centered, the manifestation of Christ's life, the river of life, is going to emanate out of you. And we're going to water the world. And then Jesus can come back and take us home. Because there's going to be billions of souls saved before His return. But I said, there's an urgency. In the spirit realm, I've never seen anything like this in all these years of ministry. I started in 91. <clears throat> I have never seen anything like I'm seeing the activity in the heavenlies right now. I'm never seeing so clearly the things of the spirit. Wednesday night I saw the four horses again running around in the corral in heaven. It's way off to the side. They have their own part of heaven, those four horses that are coming. Read Revelation, the sixth chapter. They're on their way. They're huffing. They're puffing. They're coming. The seals are going to be broken soon. We need to be ready. And we need to be harnessed in souls. Amen? We're going to finish with one little verse. When I say what's in you, the river of life, how powerful it is. Remember, the spirit, the water, is the living water, is God himself, the life of it, and the power behind it. In Hebrews 4, you all know verse 12, For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and the intents of the heart. Now when you speak, that water is going to come out and it's going to pierce people. Remember, it says the Holy Spirit convicts. So when you're speaking the river, the Holy Spirit comes out and it hits people. Now the ones that are really in bondage and they hate God and life and everything else and they're blaming God for their lot in life instead of looking at the devil who caused it and they surrender to it, guess what happens? Sometimes you're not going to get a good response to the good news and the glad tidings and the joy that you have. You know why people don't like you? Because you got joy. They're trying to buy it, they're trying to drink it, they're trying to smoke it. Yeah, how about that? But they can't get it there. Because that's a spot that's only reserved for the living water. The fruits of the Spirit in you, amen? So it's so important today that you see what you speak. The power behind your words is the force of the river that flows right down the middle of heaven, goes right through Christ, goes into His church, goes back in the other doors of the throne and back into Jesus to keep us as one. Amen. <clears throat> and it's so important that we change the way we look at people. We change the way we speak about people. Because let me tell you something, folks. God's here to save everybody that will call on His name. Amen. God is an awesome, loving, powerful God that loves everybody. There's nobody that He doesn't love and care about. And we need to be the same. I'm telling you, this world needs the love of Jesus. Amen. They don't need a church running around beating them up because they're already beat up. They really are. These people on the street corners living in their trailers, living in their tents, living off of nothing, begging for stuff. You think they like life? They already hate themselves. That's why they stay there. They think there's no hope. I was the same way. I lived in my pickup truck. I lived in my van. I know all about eating out of cans. I got that. I know what it is to go without food for four weeks. I got that. You know who put himself there? I did. I was serving the devil. I didn't deserve any better. I didn't deserve any better. But when, I, when God came and got me, I realized what life was about. Sharing the glad tidings of the good news of Jesus Christ. He gave me hope. He gave me purpose. He gave me meaning. Someone the least deserving of anybody on the planet was me. But God said, you're just who I want. Now go share me with people. Go share me with people. Next time you're speaking to people, realize the force of the power that's in you. You have the river of life, eternal life living in you that can connect anybody to Jesus at a moment's time. It only takes a minute for somebody to surrender to Christ. Be that vessel. Be willing to be used by God to touch lives everywhere you go because He will put you in the right spot at the right time if you don't have your own plans. The plans of man are so small and so insignificant. We draw all these plans up for life when your life was written out. I told you that song I hear on the one guy that announces on the message station. He keeps saying your story's still being written out. Drives me. I'm going to call them, I think. Because my story in life is not being written out. It's already written by the one who made me.
Amen. by the one who saved me. Amen. It's already there. My job is to yield and say, Lord, I don't want my own plans in this world. I want your plans and your destiny. Wow. Hope he's talking to somebody today. Just metal and not me, though, friend. But it's so important today that you yield to him in humble submission. Go, oh God, your plans are so much greater than anything I could possibly think or imagine. You have the greater one living within you. Today is a day to really give it over to Him. To really give it over. Even the people that are hurting that aren't even here. I know Deborah's already healed. I know she'll be back long, live long and strong. God's got a calling on her life. This was just the devil trying to interrupt him. And the devil's a pumpkin. He's been defeated. So I demand that she be healed and whole because I have that authority and so do all of you. She belongs in this house with us. Amen. She's our sister. And I take it personally that she got hurt. Makes me angry at the devil, not at anything else. Because he's been defeated. And she and she's going to come back stronger than ever before. She's going to see God supernaturally heal her shoulder and any other bruises yeah. in her body. Yeah. And it's going to be a quick work. It's not going to take years. It's going to be now in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because when two or more pray and they're in agreement, God will touch that. His word will be spoken and performed and delayed no longer, declares the Lord of hosts. Ezekiel 12, 24, 28. It's so important that when you speak from now on, you see the force of your words going out like a fountain of living water, of everlasting life that wants to touch every soul that you come in contact with. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. day. It's healing day. You're waiting for a healing that's already happened. I don't care what it is, it's just a name. It's just a name. I don't care what title they put on it. I don't care what they put on a doctor's report. It's still just mere words. And every one of those words has to bow at the name of Jesus. It has to. It's not an option. Everything has to bow to Jesus. I don't care what, I don't care if it's stage four or five, whatever levels of cancers they got. It don't matter. It has to go back to hell where it came from. It has to. And I speak that way because I know it's true. I know it is. I've watched God do miracles for 20 something years now. I'm one day to say 91. I've watched him be faithful thousands and thousands of times. He can't fail, he can't lie. And I know he's got a name that's superior to every other name in the universe. And when you mention the name of Jesus, everything trembles. The trumpets go off in heaven. Oh, hallelujah, God's in the house. Amen. Oh, Jehovah Rapha is one of your names. The God that healed us. Lord, we thank you that you are the living word the living water that flows through us but that water flows through us and in others to bring healing and wholeness to everybody that calls upon your name so i thank you for that anointing that's in this house so strong today the anointing to bring healness and wholeness it i just see bodies being completely restored whatever going on inside of you just put your hand up to jesus right now let that water flow through you ye were healed you're not going to be Reach out and grab what's yours. It's part of the new covenant that we just put God in remembrance of today. Reach out and grab your healing now in the name of Jesus. And Father, I pray a blessing on everybody in here that your grace and peace abound on everybody. That they stop doubting your power and your love for them to heal and make them whole. We pray so that the anointing, the anointing of healing is just flowing in here. I see that oil being poured out from heaven. Lord, you said you'd confirm your word in us with the accompanying signs, wonders, and miracles. The blind would see, the lame would walk, the deaf would hear, the dead would be raised, all for the glory of God. Oh, we praise you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus, that you are the greater one that overcame sin and death. The grave is empty. Satan has been defeated. You are Lord of all. And I thank you that this day we rule and reign with you in Jesus' mighty name. And there's nothing impossible for those that believe in Him this day.
Yes. Believe Him for the impossible and then receive it by faith in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.